Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing this vintage style embossed photo frame. Now, if you like this video, make sure to click that like button, and of course, share. Just go down right down there below the video and click on share. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you want to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, how to use the whole program, take a look at my training right down there in the top of the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start off this vintage photo frame by doing a new file here. Let's just close this one down. File, new, and blank file. Now I have my set with a width of four and a height of six. That's the default Photoshop element size with the two measurements here just flipped. So width of four and height of six. Resolution 300, everything else can be left as is. And there we go. I'll just dock this right there. And then let's go ahead and zoom in on this thing. We'll do a fit screen. Now, the first thing we need to do is to put in some guidelines in here. We're putting a guideline up here at one inch down and then one all the way down here at five inches down. These don't have to be exact, so you can just grab the rulers up here and just pull this down to see on the left hand side there where it hits that one inch point right there. Or if you wanted to, you can go to view and new guide and type in a number for that, but this is good enough for this project. I'll just go down here to the 5 right there. Again, just about at the 5. doesn't have to be exact. Now, if you don't have your rulers showing, just go up to View and make sure that rulers is checked right there. Okay, this side one here is at half an inch and then the other side is at three and a half inches. So one inch margins top and bottom, half inch margins left and right. We can now put our ellipse shape in here and for that I have my foreground color set up black. This is just the default settings and I'm using the ellipse shape right here. Yours may look like this with a rectangular shape. Just click on that and then change it over to the ellipse. I have my set at unconstrained and from center is not checked. Also one last little thing, go up to view, come down to snap to make sure the snap to guides is checked right there. Okay, come right over this upper left hand corner intersection of those two guidelines. Click and drag from there down to the bottom right hand intersection and you should see the ellipse just kind of snap right to those guides right there. There it is. That's the size for the ellipse. At this point we no longer need our guides. So I'll just hide those guides. Now we'll be using this to punch a hole inside of our paper background. Let's bring that file in now. File and you can either do a place or just an open. I'll just do open this time. There's a link in the description for a project page where you can download both of these images. Again, just right down in the description, you can get both these images to download so you can work along with this project. Now, there are two images used in this one, the old paper for the frame, and this is just the image inside of the frame. And click on open. Again, you can either open this or place this. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Now, if you're opening it like this, notice I have this as a floating window. This is just easier this way. Go up to Edit, come down to Preferences and General. And make sure right here where it says Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode and Enable Floating Document Window Docking. Make sure those two are checked and then you can do this. Just grab the background, drag it over here and let go. So there is the paper image. Now it's a little bit too large in here, but that's fine. You can make it any size you want actually. I'm just going to leave it at the full size, just make sure I'm not showing any edges. Now you can take the shape, let's pull that above that layer. Now hold the control key down and click on the icon, the thumbnail for this layer right here. Now that selects that shape. But what you want is the outside selected, not the shape. So you need to invert the selection. Go up to select, come down to inverse right here. And you should see the marching ants around the ellipse and also outside around there. Now that's correct. Come down to layer one and then just click on this little button right here. This is the add layer mask button and that makes a layer mask. Now if I hide the shape up here, you'll see we now have a hole inside the piece of paper. The hole is being made by that shape. Okay, we have that set. Let's now bring in our background picture in here. Just click on the background, file, open, or again, you can also place this up to you, either one. 
I'll just do it this way. Here's open. And again, I'm just going to drag this in like that. And we'll close that down. Then you can position this and resize. If you want to change the size on this, just hold the control key and tap the T key. That brings up the transform handles here and the transform options down below. And now you can pull these handles in and then resize the frame. I'm going to make this fit top to bottom. It's just a little bit larger. And I'll put the girl here just a little bit off to the left hand side. She's looking to the right, so I want more space on the right hand side and a little less on the left hand side. And she's OK. There we go. Now we need to convert her into a sepia tone, old fashioned look, and lighten the image up a little bit as well. Let's first do our sepia toning on this one. Go up to layer come down to adjustment layer and hue saturation and where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask make sure that's checked and choose OK. What that does is it makes this layer here linked to that one image there. It won't touch anything else. It's just linked to that one image layer. What you want to do at this point is click on the colorize checkbox right there and that just colorizes this. It makes it a basically a black and white image with color toning. Now the hue will change the color of your image. You can see that right there. If you go over here, somebody set your standard kind of blue duotone in there. We want kind of a sepia color right over in here someplace. I'm just going to type in a number. I'm using 13 on this. It's very close to this, but a little bit more red. So it, it doesn't look like, exactly like the frame. You want a little bit of a color separation between the frame and the image. So I'm doing a little bit more red at 13. Saturation, it's at 25 and that's fine. And let's lighten this up. It's a bit dark, so I'll set the lightness here to 29, and that lightens it up. But we did lose a lot of contrast, as you can see in here, so I'll fix that next. Just close this down. And if you like a real old-fashioned look, this might actually work. Old-fashioned pictures frequently are very low in contrast. But we'll increase our contrast a bit here, so I'll do one more adjustment layer. Layer, come down to adjustment layer, and this time use levels right there again, where it says use previous layer. Click on that and choose OK. And that now just links us again to just this one image. Now in here, if you pull the left side in, this darkens your blacks. The right side lightens your whites. And the middle control here controls the overall tones of the picture. So if I go to the left here, the picture lightens up. And I can darken down the darks a bit here. So you can control those. Bring these in a bit, increases the contrast, and then control your values right here. So the settings I have for this, I've brought the blacks way up. About to 60 right there. And the midtones, let's bring us back to about 1.32. Looks pretty good on that. And let's lighten this up a bit. Bring this into about 232, maybe 235. There we go. Now, if you want to see how this looks in comparison, just come right down here, little eye right there. Click on that. You can see the before and the after. So we're adding a lot of contrast back into the picture this way. Okay, the picture is now done. That's all taken care of. The next thing we need to do is to come in here and put in our basic emboss effect. Now to have a kind of a light effect, we'll be doing the embossing on a copy of this layer here. So take this layer, drag it up here to the new layer button, it makes a duplicate of that layer. Notice that the mask is still working. That's just fine. And we'll put our effect on this We'll then lower down the opacity to lower down that embossed effect. So come down to Styles. At the very top here we have Bevels. And the very first one is called Inner Ridge. Just click on that. And there's your nice Inner Ridge Bevel. Now it's obviously way too strong for this image to give it a good effect. So go back to our layers. And we'll now bring down the opacity quite a ways here. Come way down to 28 right there. That just softens that up. There's enough so it has a nice embossed look to it, but it's not overpowering. Okay, so far so good. Now we have our two designs to bring in here, and we'll get those from graphics right down there. Now here's what we're using. It's called Ornament 5. You can see it's about two thirds of the way down in the list. Here's a little slider control right there. So there's the top. We're in by type and shapes right here. And about two thirds of the way down, right down here, you begin to see some interesting things in there. And then you see these circles and rectangles and stuff. It's right in there. Right above here are some mustaches and things. Easy to spot those. 
and then right there, right next to this checkerboard pattern, that's when you want. Click on that to bring that in or double click if you're using an earlier version of Elements. Now, if you want to move this, you need to click right on the shape, right on the black part of the shape. Let me just zoom in so you can see this. I want to move this to the top, so I need to grab it right in the black part of the shape. You can then move it up like that. Let's just scroll up. We'll bring it up here. Now it's too small, and I also want it right in the center. Now our image is four inches wide, so if I pull a guideline in right to the two inch mark up here, that's my center. We can now pull this over so it's centered like that. Use that Control T keyword shortcut again, and then let's stretch this out so it's pretty good size. Not quite that big, so right in here. You don't want to go too large because this is going to be beveled out as well, so the actual shape is going to be out here. You need some space for that shape, need some space around that. You can always bring this down in size a little bit. If it doesn't work the first time, you can go back and try it again. I think I'm going to go just a little bit smaller on that. Right about there. If I pull this to the top of the page, it's about halfway down, right about at the half inch, a little bit more than the half inch line in there, but about that size, about half the size of this whole section. Okay, then we'll just center that right in here. Now I want to make a copy of this. Just choose OK. There we go. Back to the layers. There's our shape. Make a copy of this layer. There we go. We need to flip this one vertically. So go up to Image, Rotate, and Flip Layer Vertical. So it's upside down. And then just grab that and we'll just pull this one straight down. At this point, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see this better. I'll just grab my zoom control here and back out just like that. There we go. And we'll pull it down. Most ways, again, grab it from a black area. Just pull that down. And it'll pull this one down into the bottom section. Again, put that centered in that bottom section in there. Now, take these two layers. There's your top layer. Hold the control key down. Click on the second layer right here. Those are your two shapes. Right click and merge shapes. It's now just one layer. Now hold down the control key and click on that thumbnail and that selects that shape. It will get both the top and the bottom ones. You can see right there they're both selected. Now come down to the top one of your two frame layers right here. Click over on the side right here on your layer mask side. Look for that light blue outline. Make sure you see that light blue outline. Now hold the Alt key down and click on that layer mask. That takes you inside of the layer mask right here. Kind of a neat trick to know about. Now, using our black color over here, grab the paintbrush, then just paint right on top of that. That puts black inside of that selection. Scroll down to the bottom and do the same thing down below. So you now added in a couple of new images onto the layer mask. You can now deselect. Now come over here, just click outside someplace, maybe down on the person layer down there. And we now have this embossed bit showing. There's also black inside. The black inside is this shape layer right here. Now at this point, you have a couple of options. You can leave this black inside if you want to. It kind of looks nice, and you can actually come in and then adjust this a bit. Maybe give it a different tint or tone using the hue saturation. It's up to you. Or do what I did, just unselect that and leave it just as an embossed shape. So again, here, here's an option. Change this, colorize this, maybe make it a little bit less opaque. Let me get in the right layer here. There we go. Kind of fade it in like that if you want to, or just deselect for that embossed effect. Okay, let's see what, how we did. Let's just Get rid of those guides right there. I'll drag this up here and we'll stretch the image out a little bit. And there it is. There is our nice little embossed style, old fashioned looking picture frame for an old fashioned looking picture. Don't forget to take a moment and click on that like button and also click on the share button and share with your friends through social media. Make sure you subscribe as well. So you won't miss out on any of these videos in the future. 
And if you want to learn everything about how to use Photoshop Elements, look at my training course. And again, the link is right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.